Back to school, back to reality. Ay, you guys, where did the holiday go? We had a seven week holiday. Missy Dream is the wafi. But it's time to go back to school. It's time for us to start another academic year. Hi guys, my name is Irene and this is Harry Lifestyle. Welcome back to this channel. And today we are all about back to school. I'm going to be sharing with you 15 tips or 15 things that I do when I start a new school year or when we, you know, go back to school that make my life so much easier and the life of my children. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Let's get straight into it. Number one, have a food menu. Now, if you already have a food menu, this is the time to make sure that uh, you style it up. If you don't have a food menu, make sure you come up with a food menu. That food menu needs to cover all your breakfast items, lunch items, and your dinner items. It also needs to cover your snacks if your children are carrying snacks, and lunch if your children are carrying packed lunch. Now, you guys, having a food timetable is something that makes your life so easy. You don't want to wake up every morning asking yourself, what are we eating for breakfast? What are the children carrying? What are we having for snacks? When you have all these things dialed in, they make life so much easier for you. And it also helps you to know what you don't have in the house and to build your shopping list so that you can, you know, make your life easy. Make sure everything is shopped, everything is available at home. If you're a person who loves batch cooking, this is the time that you want to cook all your meals and have your meals ready. If you're like me and you prefer food prepping, make sure you boil all your gizeris, all your boshos, all your legumes. Everything is ready and cooking becomes so much easier. You know what you're cooking, your foods are ready, your tomato paste is ready. All the things that I've showed you in this video, you're all good and ready and life is simple. Number two, prepare for the cold season. This is a different school year. Normally our school year begins in January, but this one we are starting at the end of April. And so it's catching us during the cold season. And you know how the weather has changed. Now the cold season might extend Huko until August, sometimes even into September. You need to be well prepared for the cold season. That means you need to make sure you have enough uniform. You have maybe two fleece jackets. Why? Because clothes take a long time to dry now. And you need to make sure all your children have enough uh, uniform so that if something doesn't dry, of course you have more. Then you need to make sure you have things like stockings, you have things like scarves. It's also a good idea to get t-shirts and long sleeve t-shirts that your children can wear inside. When it's cold, the best way to deal with it is to make sure you're layering. And because of all this new school uniform that you're buying, make sure that everything is well labeled. The worst thing that can happen is for you to buy all this uniform and your children go to school and lose it because it is not labeled properly. You also need to talk to your children to take care of their things. Guys, it is so painful. Ah, yeah, yeah. Have you ever gone to school to the lost and found and so seen all this pile of clothes that no one knows who they are for and your child has lost that brand new sweater that you spent 2,000 shillings on? So prepare for the cold season, make sure everything is labeled and tell your children to take care of their stuff. Number three, it's time to adjust your work schedule between probably you and your partner so that you can have time to be with your children. But this is, I especially mean when they come home from school and they need to do their homework and everything. Children need structures and children want their parents to be there for them. I know we are all out there chasing the dollar, chasing the shilling, but it's time for us to adjust our work schedules. You can go to work early so that you can come a little early you can you know excuse yourself make sure you're there for your kids you guys let's make sure we are here for our kids we have been accused as a generation that we are allowing our house helps to be the one the ones who are raising our children so to avoid this adjust your time work with your mate eh? with your husband with your wife so that you guys can be there maybe one of you is involved in the morning to prepare the children, take them to school, and some the other one is available in the evening when the children need to find you at home as they are doing their homework. Time to make time for your children. Number four, it is time to take back the remote control and to take back all the gadgets. Yes, you guys, these gadgets, I this one I'm talking to myself. 
it is so hard to control gadgets with your children but we must do that so that they can succeed in their school year so if you have a playstation it's time to remove it and put it in your bedroom until schools close if your children have phones it's time to figure out how to control the use of their phones i know for older children they sometimes get homework and sometimes they get their notes through google classroom and that kind of thing but it's time for you to get back on top of how your children are using their gadgets because these gadgets they are good but they can also bring to them information you don't want them to be getting they can also distract our children so much you know they're in whatsapp groups or they are going online they're going to websites they shouldn't be going to you can use things like google family links and all that there are ways to do it passwords and all that and this is a good time for you to make sure your children are controlled in the way they're using their gadgets the way they're using their games the way they're using online interactions number five it is time to come up with study timetables and revision timetables you know guys our children need to study and maybe you're the one who can guide them sometimes they do receive a lot of guidance from school or sometimes they can do it for themselves depending on what age they are help them to come up with timetables so that they can be able to study if you just study without a timetable sometimes you really you know don't quite do a good job you don't know what you're supposed to be doing or the child doesn't know what they're supposed to be doing at different times also for revision like my child she really loves using these cards for revision so find out what works for your children when they're revising whether you're buying revision books whether you're buying past papers just guide your children and help them so that they can be able to study and they can be able to revise because they need to do well this school year number six this is something i have done in my family and it has worked very well dinner first snacks later when children come from school they're usually very very hungry and if you let them be, they are going to eat an entire loaf of bread, eat a whole whatever can of yogurt. They are going to snack. Every snack they can find in the house, they will take and eat. And then when it comes to dinner time, wameshiba. Now you are chasing your child around and you are telling them, Kula, you need to finish, you need to finish. But because they are too full of snacks, they are not able to eat a proper meal. And as parents, we want them to eat a proper meal. So my rule in my house, and especially when my children were younger, when they come home, whether it's 3 o'clock or 4 o'clock, give them a meal. Let them take their meal at that time because they'll be hungry, they'll eat quickly, they don't have a problem with eating. And then after that, they can take whatever snack they, they want. Later, they can have their fruit, they can have their yogurt, they can have a, 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 a piece of bread if that is what they want. But try this and see how much it helps with making sure your children eat a good balance meal number seven engage with your teachers and engage with the school parents it's our responsibility to make sure that we are engaging with the school and we are engaging with the teachers these days in every school you will find that classes have whatsapp groups make sure you are in that uh, whatsapp group and make sure that you are talking and interacting why that way you are able to have a good relationship with the teachers and more than that you're able to speak up most of the time our children are scared if they're if they're going through something that is making them uncomfortable they may not be able to speak up but it is actually our responsibility to speak up for them i've noticed situations where the children are being given too much homework and they are unable to deal with it and it's only in these groups and us being involved that we are able to talk and say are you teachers please reduce the amount of homework you're giving and when we speak up the teachers then listen and do do something about you know different it could be different things that are happening to your children but it is important for you to get involved don't just sit back and watch things happening get involved i'm not talking about you becoming a rabble rouser and being the noise maker and the one who is always causing a fuss maybe you will need to find the right channel to uh, speak up when things are not going right but make sure that you are involved with the school and you are involved with the teachers so that you can monitor how your child is doing the progress of your child and you can be able to speak up if things are not going right number eight diarize important dates one thing that happens when children go back to school they always come back with a newsletter in that letter you will be told the dates for maybe you're having sports day you're having field trips you're having important things that are happening in school 
there are so many things that are happening. And if you're like me and you have three children, you can imagine every child is in their season, every child has their own activities, you also have your own family activities. So if you want nothing to go wrong, because our children hate it when we forget important days, or when we fail to attend something that we're supposed to attend that has to do with the school. Diarize all those dates, have everything put up. You need to know who's having soccer, when are they going for soccer, who's going for tennis, who's having music classes, who's having a field trip, who is having science congress. There are so many school activities that usually happen and diarizing is the only way for you to keep up with them. Number nine get involved with your child in the season of life they are in now for me i have three children each of these children is in a different season of life i have one in grade two that means she's in the cbc system and you guys know how cbc is i don't know this year if we're going to be making a scarecrow i don't know if we're going to be going to sweep a market i don't know if whatever it is they're going to throw at us the best way is i have to get involved with that child in that season they are in Maybe that child is doing a special skill here and there. Get involved with that child in that season. My next child is in class 8. You know, guys, how class 8 is in, in this country and in the 8 for 4 system. She's going to school at 6.30. She's coming back home after 5.30. She has to study. She has myriads of exams. The other day we are sitting down choosing schools. Each of these children have different things they are doing and you have to get involved with them in the season of life they are in and in the season of their study. My other child is in form two. High school is all about selecting subjects. So right now the discussion we are having is what subject is she dropping. The other um, the discussion we are having with her has to do with set books. I don't know if you guys remember me. I did Mind Boy and Kisima Chalginingi. Other people did uh, what? Shakespeare. Remind me this set books. Damunyeusi. I've never heard of that one. Uh -huh. Which other one? Uh, Romeo and Juliet. Uh -huh. Things fall apart. I don't know what they're doing this year. We are yet oh. to be told what they're doing this year. I can't wait to get those set books so that I read them with her and we can be able to discuss. Your children need to know that you're involved with them and you can be able to discuss with them what is going on. Each child has a different season and you need to get involved with each child in that season they are at. Prioritize rest and sleep, number 10. You guys, school can be so, so tiring for our children. Me who has a child in class eight, I know how these kids are being pushed. Yani, I watch my children sometimes having to wake up at three to finish their homeworks. So I know it sounds crazy, but I remember even me in high school, we, what did we used to do? We used to wake up early in the morning to just put our feet in a bucket of cold water so that we don't sleep. Then all these things are happening to them. You need to make sure that your children are getting enough rest. So when it comes to weekends, Keep things easy, keep things light. You don't have to attend every social function. We were told the other day when your child is in class 8, even you, you're a candidate in class 8. So cut off all manner of, you know, socializing and all that so that you can ensure that your child is getting enough rest, especially during the weekends. And during the weekends, you will notice your child or your children will be waking up at a lunchtime or something like that. What? Don't even think about it don't even worry these children need to get as much rest as they can get because in the five days of the week they're in school they are being pushed they're being taxed and we do want them to get good grades they're getting get, getting really really tired so make sure that they're getting enough rest and you're prioritizing rest and sleep for them let them sleep early you don't need to keep your children till nine o'clock let them sleep even as early as 8 8 p.m the younger ones and the ones who are doing homework Help them to come up with a structure so that they can finish their homework as early as possible and get a good night of rest to be ready for the next day. Number 11, schedule family time. They are busy, they are working so hard and you're all busy, we are all going to work. We need to make sure that we are scheduling family time. This can be daily. You want to sit down, maybe read the Bible, pray together catch up, make sure you, you're catching up with your children, make sure there is enough family time. During weekends, make sure you have those lazy days when you can have a late Saturday breakfast or a late Sunday breakfast. 
when they take their meat term, when we have these long weekends like the one we are just about to have or the one we just had, depending on when this video goes out, make sure that, the, that you schedule family time with them. The short holidays we are going to be having will be about 10 days between the three terms. Take some time and spend some quality time with your children. They need you. They just don't need your money. They also need your presence. Number 12, prepare financially. Yes, this is going to be a short academic year, but it's going to be very, very long and very taxing on all parents when it comes to finances. This morning, I got a message from my, my child's school that they are increasing the amount that you need to pay for transport. Why? Because fuel prices have gone up. Am I not glad that I don't use school transport? But all of us are feeling how hard it has been to pay school fees back to back because there's no break. Our breaks are maybe one and a half weeks. So you need to prepare financially. If you need to talk to maybe your boss and see if you can access some money, you know, like a loan from your office or maybe from your circle, maybe from your bank, you just need to be well prepared financially. And that means you need to cut off all your excess expenditures because hey, the last thing you want is your children being sent home because they haven't paid school fees. Now, when it comes to finances, also, it's important for you to be open. If you're struggling, let's say, paying your school fees on time, go to school and have a talk with your teachers and with the administration. You'll be surprised how understanding the administration can be. But usually, when we haven't paid school fees, what do we do? We want to hide. We don't want to be seen and all that. Just come clean if you're struggling. Come up with a payment plan that works for you. You may need to pay something kidogo every single month. Whatever it is you need to do. Just do what you need to do and be prepared financially. We're going to make it. Number 13, set targets and have reward systems. We need to keep our children motivated. I love something that our school does. They always give these children vouchers when they do well in their class. Actually, we end up paying for those vouchers. But these things really help to keep the children motivated. At the beginning of the school term, it's a good idea for you to set targets with your children. Targets have to do with what are the marks they're targeting to get. I mean, you don't want to pressure your children and you don't want to set a target that is very, very hard to attain. But pole pole to set up a target and let those children see that they can do this. And when they hit that target, make sure you reward them. Make sure they, they know that there's something at the end of it all. Our school was making us laugh the other day, telling us how KFC works for their school. Because every time the children do well, they are bought for lunch. And that has caused their children to really, really push themselves and do well. So set good targets, set attainable targets, and give rewards to your children when they hit those targets. Number 14, train and empower your household. Yeah, we said we want to be present and we want to make sure we are there. We are the ones who are raising our children. But here we are, we have these house helps and these house managers who help us do this. It's very important for you to train your house help so that when you're not there, you, you may be coming home late or you may travel for whatever reason. You want your house help to know exactly what she needs to do. If it's things to do with homework, make sure there's a structure and make sure your house help understands it so that she can be able to tell your children this is time for homework empower them and train them so that they can do the right thing when you're not there you don't want to get home and your house help is like i didn't know what to do yes they may not have all the education and perhaps all the skills they need but they can always be trained to make sure that our children are doing the right thing when we're not there and that they are running the home properly and within certain structures so that everything runs very well for you here where you put in your menus, you, your house help needs to know exactly what she needs to do when she wakes up and you're assisting her, you're helping her along, you're empowering her and your home is running successfully. Number 15, and this is not last, this is just to crown everything off. Let's remember <laughs> to pray for our children. Let's remember that, you know, God is with us. We are not going to, to fail. Things look very tough. School fees looks very tough. The academic year looks very short. Some of us are worried. Will our children get the right marks? Will our children be called to the right schools? You know what, guys? God is with us. We pray. We commit ourselves to God. We commit our children to God. And everything will be okay. So don't forget to pray and commit everything to God. And that is it, guys. That is what I had for you. Those are my 15 back-to-school tips. 
I hope you found something helpful. Do you have your own tips? You can leave them down below. We can interact and, you know, channel each other, help each other along. Thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't. Give it a thumbs up, share it. It really helps to grow the channel. Asante Nisana for hanging out with me. I'll see you in my next video. Enjoy your school time. And your academic year. <laughs>